Hi there, initiates. In December 2016, I wrote a script for a Christmas episode called How Did We Come This Far? I shot it and I started the editing work, but I didn't have enough time to finish it before Christmas. There was no point releasing the episode after Christmas, so I just forgot about the whole thing. A while ago, a Christmas miracle happened, and I found that lost episode. I found the raw footage and the part I had already edited, and I decided to finish it. It was a weird trip, because back in 2016 I was still living in my old apartment and Milla was still alive. So, here it is. The lost episode of The Harvester Show. Ho ho ho, my friends! It's Christmas and that's a perfect time to tell you guys a story. How did I end up sitting here? How did you end up there watching this video? How did we all end up here together? Well, that's the story I want to tell you. Welcome to the Harvest Show, Initiate. Once upon a time there was a company called DGFX, which released a game called Harvester. Although Harvester was the best game in the world, it was a commercial failure and it drove the company to bankruptcy. Harvester was released in the fall of 1996. The Finnish gaming mag Pellit reviewed it right away in October and I knew I had to get that game. There was only one problem. Here in Europe Harvester was censored. The cutscenes where kids are eating their mom were cut off. I didn't want to play the censored version. Who would? So I made a phone call to some random Finnish gaming store and asked if they could get me the uncut version. That's what we are selling, they told me. Wow. I was surprised, but really happy of course, so I ordered the game. Well, when the mom eating scene came, I realized they had cheated me. So I called to the store again and found out that those morons didn't even know there were two versions of the game. They were just willing to say anything the customer wanted to hear to get the game sold. I kindly asked them to fuck off and I made about 100 phone calls to different stores until one of them could deliver me the uncut version. I played the game through again and I was finally satisfied. Harvester was written and directed by Gilbert Austin. I thought this man was a genius and I couldn't wait for his next game. Which never came. Years passed by and people forgot about Harvester. Except I didn't. I played the game true again and again and I loved every moment of it. I wanted to know more about the game. On the internet there was hardly any info. There was the official Harvester website but it was a disaster. For example, one of the screenshots there had nothing to do with the finished game because it was from the teaser released almost three years before the game. Then there was a fan page from 1997 which was awesome. It contained for example a walkthrough which is still the best Harvester walkthrough ever written. The fan page was created by a person called Carrigon. A few years ago I managed to track her down and now she likes the fan page I created. Then there were mainly rumors and hardly any reliable information. For example, Moby Games and Internet Movie Database claimed that there were two censored versions of Harvester. The UK version, which means the one they released in Europe, and the Australian version, which doesn't exist. And that's not all. Here ends the part I had edited in December 2016. The rest of the editing I did during this month which is 2018. From now on, there's gonna be these YouTube subtitles, which you have of course turned on. So, let's continue the lost episode and see what stupid things Internet Movie Database claimed about the censored Harvester. UK and Australian versions had several gory scenes shortened. No, there was only one scene that was censored. This here contains at least some truth in it, UK and Australian versions replaced most of the offensive dialogue about gays, Italians and Indians. That's not true. 
UK and Australian versions removed all verbal references to SNM, but left the SNM scenes intact. That would be totally pointless. UK and Australian versions have a disclaimer before the game starts. Whoever wrote this has clearly never even played the censored version. Curiously, the UK and Australian versions changed the main character's name to Mike instead of Steve. That's the stupidest thing I have ever heard. Why would anyone do that? Is the name Steve too offensive? Steve's a swell name. My dog's name is Steve. I wanted to prove all this was bullshit. So in January 2013, I wrote an email to British Board of Film Classification, which was responsible for the censorship of Harvester. They wrote me back and confirmed that they had removed two cutscenes in the sequence Mystery of Motherly Love. And that's it. So, there was hardly any reliable information about Harvester on the internet. I wanted more, and the only way to get some was to talk with the people who created the game. Actually, I began to track down Gilbert Austin, the writer and director of Harvester, over ten years ago. It was hopeless. It was like he had disappeared in 1996. The only thing I could find was Professor Griffin's Midnight Shadow Show. And keep America strong! Celebrate Halloween! <laughs> and Christopher Lee! And of course, Christopher Lee! Join us each and every week, Night Creatures, as we... Thank you, Professor! Yes! I think I finally found a Chris Lee trailer! Which one? It was a local TV show in Austin, Texas. One of the characters of the show was called Dan Dan and he was played by an actor named Gilbert Austin. Boy, that was kind of weird and unsavory. Too bad Dandan Dan was a character who always wear a mask, so you couldn't see his face. On the website of the show, there was only one small photo of the actor of Dandan. Dan. The man was bald, and he didn't have a beard. There was also a description that said, Gilbert is very talented actor, singer and comedian, as well as a professional comic book artist. Nothing about the video games. Still, I was sure he was the Gilbert Austin I was looking for. He liked horror, lived in the same city, and although he didn't have hair and beard, he looked the same. I sent emails to every address I could find from Professor Griffin's website, but I never got any answer. By the way, it's a damn good thing I took a screenshot of the Dandan Dan page two years ago, because the website of Professor Griffin's Midnight Shadow Show doesn't exist anymore. I tried to track down other people too, mostly Lisa Kangelosi and Kurt Kistler, the leading actors of Harvester. And I once found Lisa. She was doing some marketing stuff in some company. I was so excited that I didn't know what to write to her, because to me Lisa was like a movie star. When I finally figured out what to say, she wasn't working in the company anymore. And I lost her. In 2008, I joined Facebook, and that changed everything. I went through the credits of Harvester and checked if there was people on Facebook with the same names. If their profile looked promising enough, I wrote to them. The first answer I got was from a woman who confirmed that she was the Lisa Kangalosi I was looking for. And she sent me a friend request. On Facebook there was already a fan page for Harvester, but it was a piece of shit. There was hardly any content, you could do nothing there, and nobody answered your messages. The page was totally dead. So in 2011 I created my own fan page. But then I got scared. I had no idea how to run a fan page, or any other page either. There wasn't any content on my page yet. So I decided to delete it and forget the whole thing. I was about to do that when I noticed that there were already two people liking my page. That was a sign. I got a mission from the large. Have you seen the light? Yes! Yes! Jesus H. Goddamn in Christ! I have seen the light! I began to flood my page with pics and videos and all kind of harvester related content I could find. I answered every message and helped if people had questions. My main goal at the time was to release written interviews with the people who were making Harvester. I was in touch with Lisa and we were doing the interview, but the process was very, very slow. 
Lisa was, and still is, very nice to me, but she had become a newborn Christian, so acting in a violent video game while wearing only lingerie wasn't the first thing in her mind. Then, boom, I got a message from Dustin Nuff. Half a year earlier I had sent him a message where I asked if he was one of the programmers of Harvester. I had also sent him a bunch of questions in case he really was that programmer. And he was. Dustin answered to all my questions, and in March 2012 I was able to release my very first interview. By the way, do you know that on Harvester you can skip the town and go straight to the lodge? Yeah, all you have to do is type Dustin during the gameplay. Gee, I wonder where that cheat is coming from. I don't know if the interview with Dustin was too much for the guy who was running the other fan page, but he began to harass me with the messages like nice secondary fan page. The other fan page still exists, and I would really love to say it's a nice secondary fan page, but I can't. It's not nice, it's still a piece of shit. In March 2013, I finally released the interview with Lisa. From the point I sent her the first Facebook message, it took three years before the interview was finished. But it was worth all the work. What happened after that? Was the actor of Dan Dan really Gilbert Austin I was looking for? Well, that's another story. Or actually it's not. The same story just continues. I'll tell you the rest in the next episode. Now there's one person that should be here any minute now. Ho, ho, ho. Santa Claus! Merry Christmas to everybody! You couldn't say it better. See you next year! Jingle bells, harvest smells, Mr. Potsdam is dead. Hey, wait for me! Jingle bells, harvest smells, Mr. Potsdam is dead. Okay, okay, that's enough. Sergeant at Arms wanted to be as convincing Santa as possible, so he was drunk as hell. And I might have been too. When I was writing the script for How Did We Come This Far, I realized I had way too much material for a single episode. So I decided to release it in two parts. You just saw the first part. Should I create the second part? Tell me what you think. Now if you want to give me a Christmas present, please support me on Patreon. By doing that, you are not supporting just the show, but the whole fanbase. No other video game has a cult following like this, and let's keep it that way. That was it. See you in 2019. Merry Christmas, guys. Jingle bells, harvest bells.